I think that if you're looking to buy one conditioning tool, this wouldn't be my first choice. Today, we're going through my updated review of the Torque Tech M1 after owning it for one year. I'm gonna give you the good, the bad, the ugly, and at the end of the video, I'm gonna let you know whether I'd recommend buying this piece after owning it for a year. Before we hop into the review, the outfit I have on today, I have the blue camo fit grind zip up and the black fit grind shorts. Fit grind apparel is my fitness apparel line. If you're interested in checking out this outfit or anything else that we offer from fit grind apparel, I'll leave a link down in the comments in the description below, as well as a 20% discount code where you can go save 20%, get yourself a new gym outfit. So after you watch the video, like I said, link is in the comments in the description below, go check it out. So like I said, we're gonna do a full in-depth review. I'm gonna tell you all the things that I like about this, all the things that I don't like about this that I found out over the last year of using it and having clients use it in our gym and really tell you if I would recommend buying this or not if you're looking for a new conditioning piece. Let's start with the pros first of the Torque Tank. I think one of the biggest pros of the Torque Tank and one and what it does really well is the versatility and the ease of use. So you're gonna find this really easy to use within your workouts. You're gonna find this really easy to use if you train partner, or say you train with your husband or your wife, or someone that you're stronger than, or someone that's stronger than you. It's easy to change the resistance. It's really easy to modify this and incorporate it into your workouts. And I think that's a big thing when you're looking at cardio equipment and when you're looking at fitness equipment in general. You don't want it to be so complicated that it's hard to use because more than likely, if it's hard to use, you're not gonna use it in the first place. So that's something that I think that does really well. Like I said, it's really easy to change the resistance. You go up and down for the lowest point at neutral where there's no resistance. You can crank it up to one, two, or even three. So say that you're hopping in with a partner or you have a lot of different people in a group setting and they're using this. This works really well because just in the change of a switch, we can change your resistance up or down. You don't have to load a ton of plates on or take a bunch of plates off, which traditionally with sleds, that's one of the big problems is if someone's stronger than you or you have a lot of different people using the same sled, you're constantly pulling off plates or constantly putting on plates. One of the other things that I really like about the Tilt Tank in general is just the ability to add it into your workout in so many different ways. So you could use this as a conditioning tool where it's traditionally used. One way that I really like to do is I like to mix it in monostructurally with some strength trend. So for one example, maybe you're doing some squats. You're doing a lower body emphasis exercise. Mixing the tank with a lower body exercise is super challenging. It just creates a new stimulus for your body to grow, get stronger, and just gives your body a new challenge. This makes it really easy to use. And that's one thing that I really like about this is you can use it in a lot of different ways. And I think that when you're buying cardio pieces or you're buying equipment in general, you want to have the ability to use the piece of equipment in as many ways as possible. So if you're buying a machine that only does one exercise, that's not very versatile. With a piece of equipment like this, there's so much that you can do with it and you can get really creative with it. Another thing that I really like about the Hulk Tank M1 is just the quality of the build. So this is constructed very well. On the handles, it has a nice solid grip on it. It has a good textured power coat, so it's not gonna be getting dinged up and banged up. With the toe hook and the low bar here, again, you have a good solid grip on it. It's not necessarily like it's built out fully metal, but it's got a good build to it. And overall, the construction is very nice. There is some plastic casing here, but the wheels overall are really good. You could even inflate them if you need to. So overall, the build of this piece and the quality is super good. And in the last year, I've had zero problems with it. That's a huge pro that when you're looking at workout equipment, you don't want to buy something that is kind of chintzy or cheap, and you're just going to end up in a place you down the road. In the last year, I've had zero issues with this. I haven't had to inflate the tires haven't had to change on anything, haven't had to buy any replacement parts, no problems with the gear changing, there's been zero problems at all, and that's a huge thumbs up in my This gets used a lot. Where this gets used at is our gym. So in our gym, we do personal training and small mill training, so it gets used on a daily basis, multiple times a day. So it's not like this thing is just sitting in the corner and not getting used. It's constantly being used, so I would say that in the last year, it's been tested and it's really held up well. Another great pro of the Pull Tank M1 is I think that it's fairly priced. If you're looking at cardio equipment, like a bike or a skier or a rower, those things are going to be roughly in that $1,000 price range. And this, I think, is very fairly priced. You're going to be able to do conditioning with it. You're going to be able to mix in monostructurally. 
You could do some strength work with this. It's very versatile in your training. You're coming in right around the $850 and less than $1,000 shipped to your door. I think the value is very high with a piece like that. And overall, I think that's a very fair price for a really good piece of equipment like this. Now that we've talked about the pros, let's talk about the cons because there are some things that we need to address that I want you to be aware of that when you're looking at buying equipment, you want to be fully aware of the things that you may not like. So there are some cons. Let's dive into it. The first con that I think that is a big thing that depending on how strong you are, there is a ceiling for the amount of resistance that this can provide. So level three is as high as their resistance goes that you can add some weight here. And we'll talk about that in a second, but there really is a ceiling for the resistance. The nice thing about this is as you push harder, the resistance is going to push harder back east. Just like a break, the harder you push on it, the harder and the more amount of resistance it's going to push. So overall, I think it does have a good amount of resistance. If you are a very strong individual and you're looking for a really heavy sled to really do some heavy strike work, I would say that this may not be the option for you, but that's something you need to be aware of is there is a ceiling of resistance. Now, don't get me wrong. Level three is heavy and there are ways to add some more resistance. So like I said, we'll talk about that in a second, but overall, there is a ceiling for the amount of resistance that you can add to this. Whereas in traditional sleds, you typically can just keep on piling up plates to where you're putting a lot of weight in that sled. The second con is the front wheel will come up if you don't load it. And this is a huge problem that with the design this, it's not super heavy in the first place. So that's great. That's a good pull because you don't have to lug this thing around. It's super heavy. But on the flip side of things, if you don't add weight, it, the front wheel is going to come up and it's not going to allow that front wheel to keep down or provide a constant resistance. One way that you can combat that is you could put weight on the weight pinks that keeps that front wheel down. Another pro of that is it's going to add the resistance. So I have two 45 pound plates. So we've added nine pounds of resistance. I even have some 100 pound deep dish plates that I could add on here that would add 200 pounds of resistance. So that is a way that you can load things a little bit heavier. Like I talked about the ceiling of resistance, there is a ceiling. That's one way that if you're buying this, you are gonna have to load it to keep the front wheel down. Because if you push hard, that front wheel is gonna wanna pop up. It's not gonna stay down and provide that constant resistance. So just something that you should be aware of that you need to have some plates if you're buying this thing. Another huge con of this tool tank is that it's not gonna work on all surfaces. So it claims to be an all surface sled. Most of the time we're gonna be good. So on your gym flooring, on cement, on concrete, stuff like that, it's gonna provide a good constant resistance because that wheel is gonna grab on the surface and you're gonna get a good amount of resistance. Now things like gravel, things like grass, turf, asphalt, you're not gonna necessarily get as good of amount of resistance. And if you're using it in those settings, you might wanna look at other options. I used it in the grass before and I used it on turf and it's okay. It's not the worst thing in the world, but I would say that it's not as good as if you're looking at gym flooring or concrete. So you need to ask yourself, what kind of setting are you gonna be using this tank in? Are you gonna be using out concrete or gym flooring? No problem. It's going to provide an awesome resistance. It's going to be consistent. If you're using it on grass or gravel or a turf, there might be other options that you want to look at because it's not going to provide as good of a resistance on those types of services. So we talked about some pros. We talked about some cons. Now let's talk about if I would recommend buying this after owning it for one year. I think that if you're looking to buy one conditioning tool, this wouldn't be my first choice. Don't get me wrong. I love the torque tank. I love it. I love the design. I love using it in the workouts. But if you're looking at only owning one, I would recommend maybe looking at more of like a rower or a salt light. Now, if you have those options and you're looking to add another piece, I think this is where that really shines. I think that this allows you to do a lot of different things in your workouts. You're gonna be able to add it as a conditioning tool. You're gonna be able to add it monostructurally to work on some strike. You're really providing the stabilization in your workouts. And overall, it's very versatile, it's very durable, and you're gonna love adding it in your training. As far as the price, I think the value is definitely there. Less than $1,000 shipped is very competitive with a lot of other cardio pieces that you might be looking at. And in my opinion, that's a very fair price. This isn't going to be able to be used on all surfaces. So just consider what surface that you're using it on to make sure that that's going to work for you. And this is going to be a good addition for you in your training. And if you're buying this, you have to add weight. Otherwise, the front wheel will not stay down. That's a big con that if you don't have weight plates, you're going to have to buy additional weight plates in order to keep that front wheel down. But after all that said, after owning it for the last year, the feedback from our clients, the experience that I've had using in my own training, I would definitely recommend buying this. And I definitely think that this is worth purchasing. If you're looking for a new piece of cardio equipment and you already have a bike or a rower or a skier, and you're looking for something just a little bit different, that's going to be very versatile and allow you to train in a lot of different ways. 
I think this is a definite go. And I think the Tort Tank M1 specifically is a very good option. It's very durable. It's built really well. It's very easy to maneuver. We can move it around very well. And overall, you're going to be able to add it into your training, whether you're working out alone or working out with a partner. You can flip that switch, change your resistance really quick. You don't have to pile on plates and pile out plates. And because of that, it's just going to be used more often rather than just sit in the corner and never get used. So overall, I would give the Torque Tank N1 an awesome 10 out of 10. I love this thing. I use it all the time. It pretty much gets to use almost every day at our gym. And there's been zero issues. It's held up. It's been very durable. And I think that if you're looking for a new piece of cardio equipment, this is definitely one that I would look at and that I would recommend. So if you guys enjoyed that video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. And if you're interested in gym equipment reviews like this and weekly fitness content to help you get in the best year of your life, make sure that you smash that subscribe button. I post weekly fitness content to help you get in the best year of your life. And I freaking love gym equipment. So I'm constantly putting out gym equipment reviews when we add new pieces to the gym. I'm gonna leave a workout video for you to watch your next. Make sure you go check that one out and I'll see you guys in the next one.